I'm Tom. And we are at VIMTV Velocities and Music. Today, we're going to do a new album. It's an it's a ambient release called from, from an artist who we will attempt to name. It is very difficult to name, uh, but the album is called Glimmer. The artist is called Jakazik, Jakazek. Jack we're not quite sure. You tell us. That's what it is. We've done research. We've Wikipedia, they normally have the phonetics there, but nope. it's not there. Can't find anything. Nope. Nothing. So we're just gonna just. And we have to call it something, so I've been. I've kind of dubbed it Jacuzzi because I can't name anything else. I'll, Honestly, and we're not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but just when we talk to each other about these albums, like, oh, what do you think of Jacuzzi? Right. Uh, we don't know what else to call it. <laughs> so I don't know. So bear with us here. It's Jacuzzi's Glimmer. Um, <laughs> and th this album is is very much in that ambient genre where, you mm -hmm. know, he's mixing uh, mandolin, acoustic guitar, tenor sax, clarinets, um, and, and even, like, claves together, yeah. you know? Very classical instrumentation. Right. Um, and, and then the, the songwriting of how he's composing these ambient tracks, um, which, which to disclaimer, this is, you know, uh, a nine track album in comparison to like Tim Hecker's Rave Death 1972, which came out earlier this year, which I actually ended up loving after uh, we reviewed mm -hmm. it, um, which had many tracks on it. These are a little bit longer in length and, and for good reason, because how he structures these pieces together is is he'll have these he'll have these buildups to where you'll get this really loud um, section where all these instruments are, are just taking over and he'll add in some some distortion much like Tim Hecker does um, and then and then the the sound slowly decomposes and, and, and disintegrates and all the pieces kind of come out and then all of a sudden boom it comes back in so mm -hmm. what you have is like these waves of intensity yep. and and it, it makes the music interesting and easy to follow um, uh, and that's a really cool take on it because it, it allows you to really experience it. It, it is a something. It, it, the experience of listening to, to Glimmer is is something that that takes you know. It's not something you just sit there and go, oh yeah, this is cool. It's yeah. something that you are actively involved in because it, it just kind of works with you um, in, in your internal functioning. So um, that's something that I really thought was cool about it. Now, now we've had some uh, comparisons. Uh, now I just mentioned Tim Hecker's Rave Death seventy two. Tom. Uh, one of your favorite albums. Oh, uh, yeah, Harold Bud's The Room. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, before I dive into this, because this is what it made me think of, it's kind of my reference point, because right. The Room is one of my like all-time favorite right. albums. And that's another kind of, I don't want to say new age, but... Well, it's, it, I mean, that is one of the genres that Harold Bud falls into, for sure, sure. but but that's it's definitely um, some of the same classical composition tendencies that, that Jacu <laughs> Jacuzzi shows here. Um <laughs> It, it, a lot of those, but just the way that he here produces it, uh, it is much different. It's a much noisier, much thicker, whereas Harold Budd focuses more on the subtleties and the little intricate sounds. Um, but I want to say real quick, you know, uh, a lot of times people, and, and myself included, don't like direct comparisons when talking about music. And I just want to put out there that, that we, don't, we don't, when we compare something to something else, uh, you know, say like, you know, this album to Harold Buds The Room, like I'm going to do. I'm not trying to say that the whole time I was listening to this, I was sitting there wishing that it was more like something else that I like totally. better. Uh, that's not the point. Really what it is, is it comes down to, you listen to this and you, you focus on something, you know, that, that maybe you don't like about it as much, and it makes you think of another album that maybe does that better. So it creates a good foil and a good point of comparison for that album. And so that's, that's my whole point. So a little disclaimer there. Nice math term. But, yeah. oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> um, but but the thing is the thing that I love about um, Harold Budd's The Room that that this made me think of was how Harold Budd when he goes and, and on a lot of his other albums too I mean this isn't just specific to this album it just happens to be my favorite of his when he begins a song the first sounds you hear immediately sets up the mood of the song um, just boom right away whether it's piano whether it's kind of a weird synthesizer or some kind of like chimes uh immediately it strikes you mm -hmm. and, and some point in the song it'll shift and when it shifts it's so dramatic even if it's only like a couple instruments mm -hmm. doing it uh, and that effect i always find to be is so extraordinary mm -hmm. it is all over the place now this album the thing that i think it's lacking a bit is that that shifting quality that ability in each track to really establish something that sets that track apart from the other tracks 
Uh, not that every track on here sounds the same, no. but I think it accomplishes the same kind of goal. Right. Um, it, it establishes a mood very well, not on the first note like you were just mentioning, but it does it slowly. Well, like I was saying with the wave format of yeah. increasing uh, it, volume. Exactly. So, so what I found myself attaching to on this album much more is just the, the production is right. like candy. Yeah. The sounds and the textures are so cool. But as far as the song writing and as far as how... It, you know, I just feel like each of these tracks doesn't quite make mm -hmm. a unique statement in the context of the album. Mm -hmm. To me, that made it lack a little bit from my experiences mm -hmm. that I've, I've had with other albums like this. Yeah, and one one thing I, I've noted on, on ambient music, but also in, in post-rock, anything where there's not vocals, whenever, mm -hmm. whenever you start taking, you know, you know rock music and, and then, you know, it's it's derivations all focus on you know different aspects of the music you have mm -hmm. all these and you have the instrumentation you have the vocals you have the lyrics you have all these different um, pieces of the sound that you as the listener uh, can pick apart and use those pieces to relate to to have that personal connection between what your mind is thinking and feeling uh, and and then the music itself that connection is what makes you like music in in theory so when you start taking those pieces out of the music and you focus on something like this which doesn't have a lot of just blatant instrumentation you know clearly instruments are being played but it's not like cool riffs or anything like mm -hmm. that uh, you know and there's no vocals here there's very little for you to attach to so the artist has to take great care in finding ways of making you fall in love with the album and they and they can do that very strategically now you know, Harold Bud's The Room and Tim Hecker's Rave Death 1972 both do that with track titles. Yes. And and these track titles, you know, they, they, because there's nothing else, you know... They're the only words you have they're the to, only words. to refer so to. So it, it inherently will program your brain to think a certain way. And in Golden Grove, Dare Gale, Pod Suyato, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, What Wind Walks Up Above, you know, it, you know, it, it's... It invokes a mood, but that's all it does. And to me, that's kind of part and parcel with everything that this album is about. It accomplishes its goal of creating these moods and making it entertaining, showing off good production skills, and really some good, you know, instrumental composition, uh, you know, writing skills. That's great, but but to be that upper echelon of album, of, of any kind of album, but specifically one with, with limited ability to grab the listener, you know, when you don't have lots of varied instrumentation and, and, um, and vocals of any kind, uh, you... I think that what makes that upper echelon of album is the ability to capture the the mind of, of the listener. And mm -hmm. I don't feel like this does that. You don't ever feel like you are, are experiencing something, that this is something that you are a part of. Um, you're like, you're wrapped up in, in another world, mm -hmm. uh, which you, I get you from... Al you always feel more like an observer than a participant. Absolutely. And, and to me, that is what holds this album back from being something in the upper 80s to even low 90s for me. And so I'm going to settle with 72 as a score. I'm gonna go 75. Cool. Have you guys listened to Glimmer? What are your thoughts? Do you have any idea of how to pronounce Jacuzzi's real name and not his stupid moniker that these two dimwits at VIMTV mm -hmm. have come up with? So we're interested to hear on your take on that. Let us know at VIM or www.velocitiesandmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesandmusic. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Moving Music Critique Forward.